These 34 guards lined up in front of you in uniform, young men from diverse backgrounds are willing beyond their specific duties to also engage in a school of life, of service. We have the great privilege of serving the Holy Father, the successor of St. Peter, Servus Servorum Dei. Servus Servorum Dei. In this special episode, we take a closer look at the faith, virtue, and skills needed to be a pontifical Swiss guard today. and follow along as we take you through the events leading up to the moment when they swear to sacrifice their lives if needed to defend the Pope. The schedule of events for the swearing-in of the new Pontifical Swiss Guards began in the morning with Holy Mass in St. Peter's Basilica. It was celebrated by Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Pietro Parolin, who gave his homily on behalf of the Holy Father, Pope Francis. May your service be carried out with genuine faith, simplicity of heart and purity of intention. To work every day to criteria and faithfulness, lest you succumb to the enemy's blows and capitulate to his false suggestions. The 34 new recruits shared this experience with their friends and family present. Saluto voi, care guardie. They won't be without a spiritual father, though, the chaplain of the Pontifical Swiss Guard, Father Columban Reichlin, as they begin this new phase of life at the Vatican. I believe the chaplain can be an inspirer who encourages the young people to stay on the path, to ask questions, to go through life with curiosity. And I want to help them where questions arise or they are confronted with crises, to try to discover what is behind it all, what is behind it that gives life its meaning and its foundation and its goal. Being a faithful Catholic is required for entering the Pontifical Swiss Guard. Living in community for at least two years at the heart of the Catholic Church serves as an opportunity for them to strengthen their faith. Looking beyond the swearing-in ceremony and into their daily lives, we follow a new Swiss guard, Gaetan, before the beginning of his shift to the Swiss guard's private chapel, the church of Saints Martino and Sebastiano. Before joining the Swiss guard, I had always been a practicing Catholic. So in that context, it didn't really change much. The thing that has changed, I think, is the consistency. And above all, given that we have orderly schedules and often very regular schedules, it's a little difficult to always be able to keep a daily routine. Personally, how can I talk about spiritual combat at the guard level, at the level of, I think it's common whether we are the guard or not, having to get up in the morning when you are still tired, not wanting to go to Mass. I think that every Catholic and even every person who has to go to work in the morning knows this. So it's true that sometimes it happens to me on the Sentinel to have moments, as they say, at moments of a little emptiness where we don't really know what to do. 
and there is often the opportunity to enter into a dialogue, of entering into a discussion, and of giving oneself completely to speak with God. Personally, it often helps us. I can try to inspire them through the worship, the service, holy mass, etc., through education and so on. This way, they get ideas that they can then ponder during long night shifts, questions they can pursue. On average, about one man per year who returns to Switzerland chooses a spiritual path afterward, meaning he wants to study theology or even enter a monastery. Accelerating this vocational discernment by modern standards is the fact that each of these young men has already taken an oath, even to the point of having to lay down his own life for the Pope and the Holy Church. It is not only a ceremony where we will swear publicly in front of people, but it is above all a personal act that we do. And in the formula, we also mention God and the patron saints of guarding, in the sense that it is really an act before God, before it is an act before people. For me, it is. It's a very powerful thing. I think it's an honor, but also a very unique honor that we have as Swiss and as Swiss guards. After the break on Vaticano, we take you to the Apostolic Palace, where the new pontifical Swiss guards receive their first private audience with Pope Francis, and go behind the scenes for a closer look at the required training to protect the Holy Father and the Vatican. Between the morning's Holy Mass and the evening's swearing-in ceremony on the 6th of May, the new recruits received a private audience in the Apostolic Palace with Pope Francis. This day gives me an opportunity to publicly express my thanks for the presence and service of the Swiss Guard. You demonstrate a high level of motivation and willingness to serve, and I'm also very pleased with that and with the good relations among yourselves. Good relations are the high road to our human and Christian growth and maturation. It is not just a period of work, but a time, a time of life, of relationship, of intense fellowship in a diverse company. Today, it is widespread among young people to spend their free time alone with their computer or cell phone. Therefore, I also say to you young guards, go against the current. The Pontifical Swiss Guard has a very unique atmosphere because we have the joy of being among fellow countrymen every day. So I would say that first of all, it's a very Swiss environment, right? When one enters the barracks, especially the visitors, when they enter, I greet those who are coming from Switzerland, and they say, but wow, are we in Switzerland? Here is not the Vatican. I must say, there is a strong camaraderie present here, because we are, first of all, a huge family. We are a community, obviously a military community. And therefore, we have a very high discipline. We require every single guard to be according to the regulations. In the month leading up to the swearing-in ceremony, the new recruits take a series of basic training tests to meet military regulations.
The first on the list was the sport test. One of the guards responsible for examining the fitness of new recruits is Vice Corporal Matthias Roth. All recruits do this when they join the guard. It has to be passed. And if you don't pass initially, you repeat until you pass. It is a basic fitness test where you have to have a certain level of endurance. You have to be agile. But at the same time, strong enough in order to pass. Every guardsman is responsible for his own sporting level. We simply check this once a year for the troops, twice a year for the squads, and for those who also go on the paper trips. And we have a fitness room that has weights and an indoor gym and where, of course, you can let off some steam after work. But it's up to everyone to decide what they want to do. You can also go cycling and you can go running out in Rome. There are options for playing various sports here in Rome that include rowing. We have a guard group who plays football and there are lots of different ways to keep fit. For some of the listed requirements, one must be Swiss, male, and above 174 centimeters, or five feet, eight inches tall, to join the guard. Although non-Swiss Catholics are excluded from joining their ranks, everyone can still learn from their training exercises and the guard's wisdom and expertise. Uno, due, tre. Very good. Das Wichtigste ist eine, eine Konstanz. The most important thing is your own consistency. You must keep training every day, or at least every other day. I focus on small workouts, and you don't have to want to go from zero to 100 straight away. You should try to build up your own routine slowly, with simple exercises, carrying out the exercises properly every day, or as I said, at least every other day. I believe, and I am convinced, noticing the progress in myself too, this is ultimately the key to sporting success. The key places where the guards engage with the public are at the exterior posts, where they protect entrances but also welcome residents of Vatican City, answer questions from pilgrims, and distribute tickets for papal audiences. In the Swiss Guard, normally in the first 26 months, a bit of classic work is done, i.e. the protection of the Vatican, the century service, various, let's say, classic services that the public doesn't normally see. Then, after these 26 months, you can, according to the availability of the Swiss Guard, grow. Someone can become a non-commissioned officer and therefore begin a training course for escorting the Pope. Before beginning the training regimen to become a pontifical Swiss guard, potential recruits make a come and see visit to the Vatican. Leading this particular group was Alabardiere Nico Kaufmann, who guided them through the week's activities. Today morning, they were participating in a general audience. They were able to witness how the Holy Father has entered St. Peter's Square. The guard's goal is to provide them with a closer look at what would become their duties and responsibilities. Two words. In order to summarize the duty of a pontifical Swiss guard, our criteria fidelitor, loyal and brave. We're here to serve Francis or his successors as well, and we need to do this with utmost fidelity, as well as, if need arises, naturally, we are here to protect him. For us Swiss guards, the protection of the Holy Father is for us the main mission, number one. Therefore, it means that when the Pope is in movement, when you'll see those in suits and ties around him in addition to the gendarmerie, there is also the pontifical Swiss Guard. Anticipating danger and neutralizing threats 
are some of the key responsibilities in protecting the Holy Father. Every time Pope Francis attends public events and celebrates holy masses, whether that be abroad on apostolic trips or at home in Vatican City, he puts his personal safety on the line. When we go abroad, especially on apostolic journeys, we also go there to give support and close protection of the Holy Father. For us, it is a very special moment, but it's also a moment where for us, the level of attention is at its highest because we go abroad, we don't play at home. Pope Francis' desire to travel to the peripheries can create many authentically beautiful but challenging moments for a security task force. Unexpected and intense situations can arise without warning, and nearly catastrophic moments and developments have at times made headlines with Pope Francis and also other recent pontiffs. Security was beefed up following the uproar in the Mideast caused by comments the Pope made about Islam last month. <laughs> 2007 and 2008, attempts were made on Pope Benedict XVI, the first at a Christmas vigil mass and the second on the Pope Mobile in St. Peter's Square. It goes back even further. In November of 1970, there was an attempted stabbing on Pope St. Paul VI's life at the airport in Manila, Philippines. And in perhaps the most infamous moment, on May the 13th, 1981, Pope St. John Paul II was shot four times in St. Peter's Square while riding in the Pope Mobile. We have vowed to give our lives for the Holy Father. And we stand behind this vow. That is what connects us all the most. This oath to be able to stand on May 6 and to be able to swear not only in front of my biological family, but also in front of my guard family. That is serious. Leading up to the swearing-in ceremony, new recruits complete the security test to check their preparedness. In this part of the exam, they practice with tasers to neutralize an assailant. Practicing safety is also of the utmost concern to avoid harming innocent tourists and pilgrims. So the best thing I have to do when it comes to using weapons is common sense on the whole level. So unless I have training, I shouldn't touch a weapon because all accidents happen with loaded weapons. It always happens in stupidity, in their negligence. Inside the armory of the Swiss Guard barracks, Alabardiere Gianluca Andreato is responsible for the maintenance of uniforms, protective gear, and weapons which the guards wear on duty at major events such as the swearing-in ceremony, Christmas vigil, and Easter mass. We have here some special armament. It's not uh, specially protected, not thick, thicker but it has a special saint in the front. We have here Nikas von der Flue, also Brother Klaus in German. He's our national saint and also one of our protective saints of the Swiss Guard. We have the breastplate, we have a backplate, then a collar, what's inside, and the big arm plates. They are all strapped together with leather bands, we can see them here. They are strapped together, once around here. The helmet is in the Mourinho form. We have here the piece where the feather enters, and the feather goes all around till here. We have here the emblem of our founder pope. Inside there is leather and nothing else. So it's really uh, not comfortable to wear, but Jesus suffered at the cross, he suffered with the helmet. <laughs> Don't 
those um, wall guns. Gianluca continues by showing the various rifles, uniforms, medals, and swords. He admits, though, that the most potent of these cannot be found in this room. Our commander said what Padre Pio quoted. The strongest weapon, his machine gun, is the Rosencrantz, the rosary. And it is like that. So I think we also have a weapon here that can have lethal consequences. swearing-in ceremony of the Pontifical Swiss Guards served as a great moment of anticipation for the community around Vatican City. Various figureheads such as bishops, cardinals, political representatives from Switzerland, and ambassadors from various countries to the Holy See were visibly in attendance. Great in number and drawing attention during the evening ceremony were also friends and family of the Guards. Parents, brothers and sisters are the most important reference persons. They also offer the young guards the necessary support through prayer. This is very important because not a few of them are spending an extended period abroad for the first time with such a responsibility-driven task. Some of the fathers and brothers in the crowd are current or former guardsmen themselves. During an earlier meeting with the press, some guards and family members shared their thoughts and emotions. It's been 32 years since you entered the guard. Is your heart still beating? The oath for me is one of the most important days of the year, almost more than my birthday, because it is connected to a memory of friendship. But I must say, it's beautiful then to have now here my son always still active. It is an honor a pride, there are no words. While for some the oath is already familiar, for many others it is incredibly novel, as these new recruits are the first in their families to serve the Holy Father. I am the first, and it is a great honor to make this entrance to the family. I've been able to join the Swiss Army and other armies as well, but I think coming to this army is the best thing that could have happened to me. They, my family, reacted very positively. They were really very proud that I made such a decision, and we were of course delighted that you could be there today. And your friends too? My guess is that they're the same age. At first, they thought I was joking with them about what I said about joining the Swiss Guard. But then, when I explained what I meant, they understood. Last year, when my brother joined, my brother is also in the guard, and that was like a motivational boost. So I said to myself, come on, I'll sign up too. And then the whole thing took off. The whole registration process started there, so it's really nice to still have a piece of home here. Service in the guard lasts at least two years. Afterwards, while quite a number of them renew for extended service, many use this experience to build a foundation for their future. Alabardiere Luca Titus, who is finishing up his service, recently proposed to his fiancée, Zoe. We went to Mass together at our chapel, and then I, we went to the gardens, and uh, I proposed to her in front of a nice fountain up uh, in the gardens. We've called each other every day for two years. There are exceptions, but almost every day. And she was able to come pretty often to see me, so that was a blessing. So we will get married uh, back home in Switzerland, near Lake Geneva. We found a, a beautiful neo-Gothic neo church next to the water. Luca's current post before completing his service involves standing guard outside Pope Francis's room. Going forward, he plans to continually remember this as a great honor.
We are in service in front of his room 24 hours a day, and sometimes he will come out in the morning and we get to, to greet him, and so we are the, the first persons that he sees in the morning. And what touched me was always his great kindness, his attention to us. I still realize that it is very special to be here and that I have to be grateful for it. I would like to extend great thanks to the Holy Father, Pope Francis, to our superiors in the Secretariat of State. Their great trust and benevolent support honor us and spur us on the fulfillment of our duty. Dear guards, I thank you wholeheartedly for this choice and congratulate you on today's oath. Giuro di osservare la propria pelle, pur, olfo!